to the God of heaven, who yeah. once again has blessed us, granted us the privilege to come and to proclaim a word from the Lord. Yeah. Grateful for this great church, yeah. what it seeks to stand for and doing in the community, sharing the word of God that lost men might be saved, yeah. and that saved might be strengthened mm -hmm. to do even more for the cause of the Lord. Amen. Bring you greetings from the Central Church of Christ, Amen. where I'm privileged to serve as minister mm -hmm. and appreciate and see those who have made it all the way down. Amen. They give me every Sunday, but somehow they made it down tonight. Amen. And I'm grateful to Sister Cook, who was my eyes tonight, who is, I should say, and of course for her grace and her mercy as well. Amen. I'm traveling without Sister Rupert. Ask that you would keep her in your prayers. She's in Mississippi. Went home to see her mom and she's coming back with her. Stay with us for a little while. Pray that God will give them traveling grace. Allow me just to take a little time to encourage you. If you have not as of yet purchased your ticket. For our banquet, song fest that is coming up this coming Sunday and gospel meeting with Brother Samuel Pounds. We want to encourage you to do just that. Still a little time, the window is still open. If you can call by tomorrow. Amen. So you can get your ticket for the banquet. Be a part of an exciting encouraging time the saints of God will come together if you will turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 10 verses 9 through 16 the book is Acts commencing at verse 9 Terminating at verse 16. Before I begin reading, I want to thank Brother Ed for allowing me the privilege to stand and proclaim a word. We appreciate Brother Ed Maxwell. Like we call him Dr. Ed. For without a doubt, Brother Ed is the scholar of preachers around. And always enjoy his messages as he take you from the classroom mm -hmm. out into the field uh, so that you might grasp right the word of God. Right, Grateful for the elders for allowing me to be present, the deacons and this congregation. Amen. What you do and what you stand for. You know you all kind of remind me somewhat back down home. Yeah. <laughs> of how you all sing. Amen. Uh, that kind of singing stirs me a little bit. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Amen. I don't want to say to my brother, Brother Prince, you go on and shout, boy. Yeah. <laughs> God is good, isn't he? Amen. All the time. Amen. Amen. The Word of God. Yes, sir. Verse 9. On the mark. As they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up upon the housetop 
to pray about the sixth hour and became very hungry and would have eaten. While they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and led down to the earth wherein were all manners of four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and fowls of the air. There came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord. For I've never eaten anything that is coming or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God has cleansed, that call not thou come. This was done thrice, three times. The vessel was received up again into heaven. If you will, lend me your heart and ears as we focus on this gospel revival. Mm -hmm. Evangelizing our mind to share the word of God with us. Mm -hmm. Think on the subject. Yeah, yeah. Picky ears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Picky <laughs> ears. <laughs> As Peter was on his journey. Because Cornelius, you see, saw a vision. And the angel said unto Cornelius, Send me into Joppa and call for the preacher by the name of Simon Peter. He will tell you what you need to do. While on his journey, the book says that Peter went upon the housetop. It was about time to pray, to get ready to eat, but he fell into a trance. God opened a smorgasbord board and it came down from heaven. The word says, all man was in the sheet. We have, brother A, we have some wild things. We have some creeping things. Yes. And all kind of four-footed beasts. Yes. And we got some fowls of the air. Yes. And the Lord said to Peter, Rise, kill, and eat. Peter said, No, Lord. Because I've never eaten anything uncommon or unclean. In other words, it means this. I have never before eaten, and I'm not about to start right now. <laughs> Are you with me? Amen. The voice said the second time, rise, kill and eat. Peter said, no, Lord. Said to him a third time, rise, kill and eat. He said, no, Lord. I'm sure all of us in some way can identify with brother Peter. Do you remember when back in the day when your grandma and your grandmama and your mother fixed your food and placed some unidentified stuff <laughs> on the table before you? You looked at it and you said What's this? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Who eat this? Anybody in here? Yeah. Hey. And then because your mother even said to you, don't you know children in China are starving? Yeah. Anybody in here? Folk are starving. You talking about 
Mm. What's this? <laughs> and then your senses went into overload. Like little children do. You started picking at it. Mm -hmm. Took your fork. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Yeah. And then you smelled it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if it didn't look right, you it. if it was the wrong color, <laughs> am I right about right. it? You know there's some food I just can't stand, and I'm 55 years old. You know how mama used to fix some of those okra. Yeah, I can't stand on okra. Oh, no. And I watch folk eat ball okra. Nasty. Slick. Nasty. Slime. Oh, yeah. And it just slide on down. Hey, Amen. Mama used to put it in the greens. Yeah. Get some fat back. Oh. Something about fat back. Make it all smooth in the green. And then put the okra she had bought it in the greens. I said, Mama, I just can't eat it. <laughs> then the okra will burst open and see. Yeah, oh. Will be oh. everywhere. Oh. I tried to eat it. <laughs> it just wouldn't go down. Hey, man. Hey, man. I remember. Mm -mm. Trying to eat oatmeal. <laughs> it just wouldn't do me right. <laughs> Let me tell my story. I remember back in, you see, it was about the second, third grade. And we used to have to eat oatmeal. I remember round about Christmas time. We would tell a story. That's when you used to go to school and and they would fix breakfast for you. Anybody in here? And uh, I remember, you know, the cafeteria lady would walk around. Did you eat your oatmeal? Did you eat your oatmeal? We will open the milk cart. Pour the oatmeal down in the milk cart. <laughs>
But really, we are awesome. And God has to get us ready to move from one position to another. I want to look at the text. Listen to God Almighty. Here is Peter. Peter is going on down. And the book says, a smorgish boy from heaven. Isn't it amazing? All manner of things. There are all manner of creeping things. Four-footed beasts. Wild things. Not only that, but five of them. Can you imagine how Peter thought? In his mind, being a Jew. Because he said, I've never eaten anything. Uh, but who are you talking to, Peter? I am God. And I said, rise, kill and eat. I want to give you three lessons tonight. And then the message is going to be yours. Know what God began to work with. He's working with Peter. Because the truth of the matter is that Peter is a prejudiced preacher. Amen. You do know you can be a preacher. Amen. And still be prejudiced. Amen. Amen. You do know you can be an elder. Y'all ain't with me. And still be prejudiced. be prejudiced. You do know you can be in the church house. Sit on the pews. And still be prejudiced. Because Peter was a prejudiced pit. Oh, y'all ain't with me. Amen. And what God had to do was to get Peter to see his own prejudice. God is a God who knows how to work at the right time. Peter went on the housetop, fell in a trance, and the book said he would have eaten. God knows how to come at the right time. Catch you right at the right time. Know how to work with you. He uses an analogy to take food to help him see the separation with food that he got his separation with people. He's moving him from the obligation to the Mosaic law because Peter was obligated to the Mosaic law but God is going to move him from obligation to understand the principle that was found in the gospel. Stay with me now. Peter is a Jew. And as a Jew, Peter said, I've never eaten anything. Are you with me? Common or unclean. Note his prejudice for when you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 14, listen to verses 3 through 20. There were certain things they didn't eat. Listen. Don't eat anything regarding a disgusting animals. You may eat the meat of cattle, sheep and goats, wild sheep and goats, gazelles, antelopes. All kinds of deer. It is all right to eat meat from any animal that have divided hooves and also chew the cud. But don't eat camels, rabbits, and rock badgers. These animals chew the cud but do not have divided hooves. You must treat them as unclean. Don't eat pork since pigs have divided hoops, but they do not chew the cud. Are you with me? So much for bacon. <laughs> Don't touch a dead pig 
so much. Oh, I can tell you some story about some pork, <laughs> about rabbit. You do know Sister Rupert's father. That man took a pig, a hog, cut it open. Y'all know back in the day when they used to kill hogs. Open it up. Had a sharp knife. He said, Willie, here is the ham on this side. Here's the bacon on that side. Are you following me? You know certain things about food. I can remember nobody cooked like mama. Because mama could show enough cook when we would go to the family reunion. I would look for mama's sweet potato pie. Because mama could show enough cook. And then I got married. Sis Rupert here, okay. <laughs> Prejudice down in your heart. 
the Holy Spirit has a way of bringing it. He'll bring it out of you so that you see who you are. How do you know it, preacher? Because as he went on his way, the book said these words. Peter went on and he began to preach to the house of Cornelius. When he came in the house, the book says that they were all gathered together. Cornelius said, we've called you that you might tell us what we need to do. Peter then asked the question, why am I here? Well, why do you think you're here? You are a gospel preacher who have come to preach the word. Peter then looked at the house of Cornelius. He got some issues in his heart. But the book says, as he started to preach the word, the Holy Spirit fell on them. Am I right? What are you doing, God? I got to intervene. I need to help you, boy, because you're downright prejudiced. But I need to help you because I got somebody over here you need to preach the word to. And the Holy Ghost fell on them. Am I right about it? I heard Peter say, now I know why didn't you know it before? I just didn't see it before. I didn't see myself that I thought like that. But now since you broke down the sheet and the four-footed beast and the wild and creeping things and all the fowl of the air, I didn't see it then. But I sure enough see it now. Now I know that God is no Respect of person. person, but a man who is righteous and fears God. Him, are you following me? Well, let me give you number two because my time is moving. Number two, note that truth, all truth, is not given at one time. All truth isn't presented. At one time. Right. How you know the text? You do know Peter had been an apostle for about 10 years. He had been preaching as an apostle for 10 years. And he still had not grasped the mission of the church. Are you all with me? Can you imagine sitting at the feet of Jesus, observing the miracles, feeding 4,000, 5,000? Can you imagine? Being there after watching Lazarus been resurrected from the grave. Can you imagine sitting at the master's feet and he's teaching the word of God and still not grasp the mission? How many folk come to church? Praise the name of Jesus. Dance all over the place. I got the Holy Ghost. He's in my life. Shouting for joy. And still. Not grass. The mission. Of the church. Going into the world and. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes. And he is baptized, shall be saved. Peter had witnessed all these things, but he still had not grasped the mission of the church. At the beginning of the church was simply all Jews.
But you see, God has said a long time ago, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And you, are you following me? I'm going to bring other folk, other sheep I have that are not members of this fold. I'm going to bring them into the sheep fold. There'll be one shepherd. But I got one sheep. Peter wasn't ready for that yet. Anybody in here? Talking to anybody? See, how do you see the church? Let me give my experience. You know, in Mississippi, only two types of folk. Well, <laughs> you know, you either live on this side of the tracks <laughs> or you live on that side. Amen. Black. White. White. Amen. Mood of Philadelphia. Oh, boy. Right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> there were folk who became members of the church. Brother Rupert just had never seen, you know. <laughs> there were some folk who looked like me, but their speech was different. <laughs> Amen. We had the Honduras, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the West Indies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Then had some from South America. And on top of that, some from Africa. Mm -hmm. You know the African would come in wearing their dashik and all their hair colors. <laughs> and I'm looking like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going to string some folk out here. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord took my view from like this Amen. Amen. to like yeah. mm -hmm. this is the kingdom of God. Amen. How do you view the church? Amen. Just you? Mm. <laughs> Let me come home for a moment. You know, we went over. <laughs> Help me, Lord Jesus. You know, we went over for the first time to a wife. Hot. Yeah. I put on my three piece. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had my sister on. Walked up in church, clean to <laughs> Got in there. They didn't have any ties on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Matter of fact, they were wearing sandals. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Short pants. Mm -hmm. And the brother had his collar all over. <laughs> Serving at the table, <laughs> and I said to myself, mm. What are you doing? <laughs> I know he can't be right. <laughs> All right, y'all follow me? Mm -hmm. See, the Lord had to work with. Mm. Oh, I'm not saying to this church that brothers shouldn't wear a tie. That's not what I'm saying. Because if you struggle with that, that's not a tie issue. That's an authority issue you have trouble with. Amen. Amen. Because you'll still have that blue and green suit working at McDonald's. Yeah. Mm. That's not an issue. Amen. But the kingdom. Right now. Break it. See, you might go places 
and they dress different. Yes. 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 See, your view has to change. Because yes. where you are, mm. are you all following me? Yes. Yes. Peter was a picky yes. eater. Yes. And one thing about picky eaters, because I know them. Because uh -huh. yeah. I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> You lose your meal if you're not careful. You lose your blessing because you're all caught up in what ought to be, and the Lord is trying to move you from one place to another. No, Peter, for 10 years, he's an apostle, but he does not grasp the mission. But five years later, after this event, when you read Acts chapter 15, remember they had gathered to discuss circumcision. And the book says, Peter, when there had been much disputing, Peter stood up in the midst and he says, Brethren, you know that a good while ago that the Lord by my hand chose me by my mouth to speak to the Gentile. Long time ago, Peter, you didn't get the mission. But now, Peter said, I understand. Who am I? Are you following me? Because when he went in chapter 11, there were some other brethren who came with him. And remember, they met and they said, you know it's wrong to go unto a man's house who is not of us who is a circumcised. Peter rehearsed it from the beginning. You see to help some folk. You got to start from the beginning. You got to tell the story all over from the beginning. Peter said well let me tell the story. And when he finished telling the story. They said well I guess God did not giving them salvation. You see, some folk, you have to help them to see the truth. That's the role of the preacher to bring me out of darkness into the marvelous light. That's the role of elders to help feed the church, to pastor it, to move it from one place out of darkness into the marvelous light. Am I right? Because at one time, you were out in the darkness, but somebody came preaching. Somebody came teaching to help move you from one place. Well, I got to close it out now. Well, my final point is for Brother Peter, Jesus, the master teacher, had to intervene to help because that's the role of the Holy Spirit. Giving us the word of God that we might understand. Can I take you on a journey for a moment? Can I call a few witnesses who will witness? Because at one time they were in darkness. But because the master teacher himself took them from the classroom and out in the field that they might understand the word of the living God. One day I heard Jesus say, you know the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. Are you with me? But before I even get there, I heard him one day preaching and the book says Peter and him before they became apostles. Out there working and the book says, thrust it out, Peter, a little bit further. After he had finished preaching the word, he said to Peter, cast the net. Are you with me on the other side? Peter said, Master Lord, we've been fishing all night and have caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word. I'll do just that. Cast it on the other side. And the net was full. I want you to know. There are three types of fishers. Three types 
of fishermen in this world. There are those who fish from the bank. Are you with me? You know them because you are a fisherman. You know those who fish from the bank. They got a rod and a reel. And back in the day, it used to be a cane. <laughs> But they knew I wasn't serious. It was a 202 reel. I take my reel. Shh, shh. Had my little reel. Shh. You see, folk who got such a cane and small reel only fishing for certain. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You can only catch a perch, catfish. But then there's a serious second kind of fisherman. They leave the bank, and you know they are somewhat serious because they got waders on. They wade out in the water. Am I right about it? Their equipment is more serious than a rod and a reel. Am I right? They go out a little further looking for other kind of fish. Am I right? But Jesus, Jesus was a deep sea fisherman. Am I right about it? He went out, out in the deep. Am I right? Out in the deep, you might find a swordfish. You might even find some sharks. Out in the deep, are you with me? May even pull up a squid or octopus too. Out in the deep, what are you saying, preacher? You see the chest? You see, the world is filled, is a deep sea thing, and the church is in the business of leaving the shores, not only waiting in the water, but going out in the deep. Every now and then, when you baptize some folk, you might baptize a few crooked folk. <laughs> Don't you get this stand? Cause you're in the business of deep. Ain't no telling when you throw out the gospel what it just might bring back. Cause I heard Jesus say, am I right? When the net goes out, it'll catch some good and it'll catch some bad. Some folk are like goldfish. They just pretty. And don't do a thing. Am I right about it? There are some folk in the church. They just like barracudas. They are tied up in a minute. If they can't get their way up, can't be the lead song leader. I tear up the group. Say amen. Can. Am I right about it? There's some folk in the church just like catfish. They hang around in the mud all the time. Say man, if you can. There's some folk. Are you with me? Jesus was the master teacher. Said unto Peter and to the rest, follow me and I'll make you Fishers of men. Am I right? I gotta teach you how to leave the bank. Come out on in the water and start deep sea fishing. But before you can deep sea fish, I gotta change your attitude first. I gotta get your mind right first. Cause if you a picky eater. Now, why are 
are they knocking on those folk doors? Mm. <laughs> now, why do we need those people in the church? Mm. You know they ain't going to do nothing but just take all your money. Mm. Say amen if you can. Amen. Amen. Now, why do we need to do this? Because you are deep sea fish. You see, Jesus has called us from being picky eaters. And isn't it tough at times when you are used to eating a certain diet? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you don't change overnight. Mm -mm. Amen. Amen. And the only one who can help you with it is the Holy Spirit. Amen. He has to work with your mind. Amen. Then he has to help you to, with your taste bud. Cause that kind of food, if you're used to a certain kind, don't taste the same. But kingdom business is saving men who are lost. My question to you tonight, are you a picky eater? You know, some folk, picky eaters, how do you watch some folk pick eaters? You grow up in life, you got to have all your food in certain places. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, something. <laughs> you know, growing up, I had to have a plate, and the plate had to divide shit. Because you can't stand to have juices flowing with the other food. All over the same place. <laughs> but on the other hand, there are folk. Have you ever seen them? I'm sure you saw them on Sunday. They put all the food. Amen. Mix the food together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and their conclusion is it all going to one place. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> all going to the same place. Amen. Amen. Because they are not Amen. picky eaters. <laughs> and they ain't going to lose their food because well, you're looking at them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> what Peter had to learn. What the Holy Spirit was teaching. From heaven, four-footed beasts, wild beasts, creeping things, and all the fowls of the air. God was helping him to see his own prejudice. So that he might go and preach the gospel to the Gentile. Because you can't do what you need to do until your stairs deal with you. Amen. When he did that, on the day of Pentecost now, let me tell you about the kingdom. If you're present tonight, still picking over your food. If you're a church tonight, Still struggling over little things. Why not ask the Lord to help you? Like he helped Peter. Drop down. Rise. Kill and eat. And your answer? Don't let it be like Peter. No. I never ate nothing clean or unclean. It ain't about to start now. God said, you know who you're talking to, right? Uh, you do know who brought you to his church. <laughs> now, let me ask you one more time. 
Rise, kill, and eat. Whatever you say ought to be the answer. If you're present tonight, not a member of the Church of Christ, why not? If you're a picky eater, you know I've been a member of this church all my life. Why do you think he put come in contact with truth? Yeah. Is that he may help you to see truth what it is. Yeah. Hearing the gospel. Believing the gospel. The death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. To repent. Lord, I've done wrong. It's a change of mind, an attitude. Change it. Help me to grow each and every day. Confess the sweetest thing. Mm -hmm. Then be willing to be baptized so your sin might be washed away. Yeah. And every day you are growing in his grace, in the knowledge of Jesus. And he keeps challenging you even more and more. Mm -hmm. And even after 10, 15, 30 years in pre-church and you've been preaching, teaching, you still haven't mastered the book yet. Amen. 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 See, listen to what John said. Many other things he did that are not written in this book. And I suppose if they had been written, the book, no book can hold everything he did. Amen. Right. After preaching for 33 years, I'm just touching. The iceberg. Amen. The book is so deep, and the spirit in prayer gives you a greater insight to his word. For he said, I'll come and I'll sup with you. I'll open your mind to what I'm trying to say. Oh, no, you've been in the church. How long? Amen. But you keep growing. Amen. Because you're a picky eater who got to be changed. If you need to come, we're going to stand and sing. If you need to come tonight to commit yourself to the Lord Jesus, to help move, soon and fall, and do even more than you ever done. When the preacher and the elders, deacon, folk working with you, why not make a commitment? I'm going to do all I can do change my ways yeah. to submit to the word Amen. that I may grow and this church may grow. Amen. Why not come? We're going to stand and sing. Amen. Why not come right now as we sing?